What's up, Maz here. I hope you're having a splendid day. Today is the first episode of a car detailing series I'm doing to my 2020 BMW G2330 E. <laughs> long, long name, which is parked outside. So in this first episode, we will do the cleaning process and the decontamination steps. And in the second episode, we will do the polishing steps. And in the third episode, which is the grand finale, is to actually then apply ceramic coating. And more specifically, we will be applying Gion's Synchro Kit. I have used this before and I really 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 like it so hopefully this video series will uh, give you a good idea of what is to expect when doing such work yourself i'm an amateur i do this as a hobby and i really really enjoy it and hopefully you enjoy it as well so if you like this video give it a thumbs up that will support me a lot do remember to subscribe and hit that bell icon to see the coming episodes and also modifications to the mx5 we have some tracking videos coming as well Hopefully we have some modding for the BMW coming as well and some other videos which will be fun. I have been fully, fully busy with uh, construction work, etc. at our house. I have a vlog series coming for that, so stay tuned. A lot of talking. Let's jump into the video. Hope you enjoy it and I will be seeing you on the next one. So this is my 2020 BMW G2 330e. I have had it for almost one year. I got it in December 2019 and it is in this beautiful, beautiful sunset orange color. So what we're doing now is a first initial inspection and it is an important step because it will give you a rough idea of what to expect with time management and also the type of products, etc. you would need to have. What is also important already at this stage or before you even come to this stage is to go over what type of result do you want to achieve? Do you want to have a 100% perfect paint or is 80% enough or 90% enough that depends on then your goals and what your expectations are and how you use the car and what type of car etc etc for me this is my daily i don't expect to reach 100% perfect paint because first of all it will take much much longer time and also the first mechanical wash i will do most likely would endure some scratches or minor swell marks etc so for me, somewhere around 90% is fully sufficient. It will give the paint the gloss I need and the depth I need. So that is something you need to consider already now because potentially you would then have to see if you have all the products and materials you need to have and also it will help out in your time management. As you can see, the car is not that dirty, but still we need to do a full cleaning and decontamination before we can see what is expected with regards to the compounding, etc. You want me to back up with that? The first step of the cleaning process is to get the wheels clean because they are usually the most dirty part on the car. So you can use whatever wheel cleaner of your choice as a first step. So you spray the product on and I'll do that on all four wheels. I'll just show you on one now. And then I will let the product sit for around three to five minutes. This is dependent then on the product you're using and what temperature and also how dirty the wheels are. I need to mention these wheels have been ceramic coated. I have a video on that if you want to have a look. So once the product has been sitting then we thoroughly rinse the wheels from the product and then we move over with the actual mechanical wash. I will use regular car shampoo for that and different type of wheel release, mitts and brushes etc. You can use whatever you have in hand and whatever you prefer. You want me to back up with that I won't. No, I won't keep you around anymore. No. No, no, how deep it cuts 
next step in the cleaning process is to prepare the paint for the actual mechanical wash. We don't want to wash with any loose gravel, etc., on the paint. So therefore, I am using an alkaline degreaser and applying it with my foam cannon. This could have been applied with a pump spray as an example as well. And the reason for why I'm using an alkaline degreaser it is because it's summertime and I didn't see any need for using stronger degreasers such as a petroleum based degreaser but if i would have been doing this during the winter period i would most likely use a degreaser first and then go over the car with the alkaline degreaser i will let the product sit for three to five minutes and that depends on the temperature and also the product i would be using etc and also how dirty the car is once the car has been sitting there for some time it is time to thoroughly thoroughly rinse the degreaser and any loose grime off the car so we are not just removing the degreaser with this rinsing process we are also trying to remove as much of the loose dirt and gravel etc we have on the paint so we don't smear that around when we go over the car with a mechanical washing done. The next step of the cleaning process is the actual mechanical washing of the car and with mechanical washing it means that we go over the car with a mitt or similar and we actually then touch the car and remove as much of the dirt as possible but we don't want to go over one area too many times because that itself can induce more swirls or scratches etc and also as you can see i'm using the two bucket method and this is my preferred way of doing it but there are other theories of what works better or not and also as you can see i'm using one mitt for the upper portions of the car and then i'm using one mitt for the lower portions and in the door jams in order to reduce the risk of adding more scratches and swirls to the paint before we actually get on with the polishing step and this is also something to consider in your regular maintenance washes as well
following two steps are the decontamination of the paint. The first one is a so-called chemical decontamination. Your car's paint is embedded with industrial fallout, brake dust, rail dust and other metallic contaminants. So what the products in a chemical decontamination then do is to react with this metallic contaminants and loosen them up. And once you rinse the product off, the contaminants will be washed off from the paint. And what is significant usually for these type of chemical decontamination products is once they react with the metallic contaminants is they will change color to purple or red etc and then you will know that the product has reacted and done its job once the product has been thoroughly rinsed the next step is then to do a mechanical decontamination so all the previous steps we have done might have left some larger contaminants left on the paint those can only be removed with a so-called mechanical decontamination which includes using a clay or a clay mitt and for that we have to lubricate the surface thoroughly because the clay or clay mitt is quite abrasive and we want to minimize the risk of inducing more scratches to the paint because again then these are abrasive materials and what is recommended always after doing the mechanical decontamination step is to actually follow up with a polishing process because this will leave scratches the chemical decontamination is risk free so to speak but the mechanical decontaminations can actually induce scratches which will be left on your paint if not taking care of them The last step of this cleaning and decontamination process is to thoroughly dry the car and as you can see I'm using a towel and I'm also using a dryer to get any water out from the nooks and crannies. This makes it simpler to add the masking tape and also the vibration from the polisher might release this water if you would have not blown them out with the blower then.